Gage Managing Director Michelle Snyder. Michelle, I know you say inflation is cool, but it's only taking a break that it's not over. With that in mind, then what's going to reignite it? Well, there's so many different factors that could reignite it. For one, we obviously have uh, China demand with them waking up. That could really put stress on an already low supply. We have talk of oil being priced in something other than petrodollars. That certainly would be inflationary as our dollar would drop. We still have problems with climate and food shortages around the world. We have a situation still with social unrest around the world, strikes happening. Even in this country, there's been some unrest. So, and also central bank policy missteps, which I'm just listening to your last guess, seems like it's a very high probability that could happen because the Fed is really in this quandary. You know, so yeah, all of those things can spike. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a long list. Uh, and certainly when the list is that long, uh, that's when you get jittery yeah. markets, right? Two years ago, some of the most brilliant minds on the street were calling for a commodity super cycle. And for a while, they were spot on. I mean, look at that chart. It went straight up. Then it was all, all of a sudden, it's kind of stalled. It's been, you know, it's kind of pulled back a lot. But you say it could still happen. Walk us through this. I mean, how does it happen? And the best way we can make money off of it. Well, for one, commodities just by their own nature are volatile. So the fact that we see any volatility at these levels is certainly expected. Number two is that in terms of just statistically, when you get inflation over 6%, which is where we've cooled to, we've been much higher, it takes about six years to unwind. Now, everything moves much faster in this universe, but still, we're figuring at least another two, three years for it to unwind. And so essentially what we're seeing right now in the market, and something on my last time I saw you, we talked about gold and precious metals. And I think gold is really telling the story mm -hmm. that not only is it firm, even when the market corrects, but right now it's trying to make new multi-month highs while the market is still down and actually has the potential to double. So our, our right now investments are really in the gold, precious metals, some of the other industrial metals, uh, mainly even if energy and oil still looks potentially yeah. uh, like it could go much higher. If gold uh, doubles from here, Peter Schiff is going to be inseparable, right? I better get him on the show now while I can fit his head through the studio door. Hey, you had a line <laughs> from your note. Uh, that I really thought was intriguing, right? You said, but one thing we know, it's more important to adapt to changing landscape than to get stuck on a macro theme. What does that mean for our audience? Like, how do you apply that, that sort of wisdom into investing? Well, remember now, we're not really necessarily talking to the passive investors. We are much more active in mm -hmm. that. We use risk-reward parameters. But really what I mean is this. At this point in time, what I've learned from my experience is if you get too bearish or too bullish, then you're really not seeing the forest from the trees. So you really have to kind of step back and look at a whole picture. And for us, the economic modern family really does the trick. If we look at the key sectors and the key indices and we see what they're telling us, then we can pretty much from there become whether more bullish or bearish, depending on that. So I'm saying really we need a hybrid approach, technical mm -hmm. analysis along with some awareness of what's going on in the world around you. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Michelle, I'm not sure we saw each other this year. Happy New Year and appreciate all your help. Talk to you again real soon.